Fertilizer comes in many forms, depending on your gardening outlook. If you're super conventional, it comes in a nasty smelling, conventionally derived pellet filled plastic bag emblazoned with a three figure MPK ratio of your choosing. What's it made out of? Where did it come from? How is it made? What does it do to the soil in the long run? These don't concern you. Rip open bag, sprinkle, done. Honey badger don't care. Honey badger don't give a shit. It just takes what it wants. If you're an organic farmer, perhaps you use a plastic bag full of granulated pellets that claims to derive from a more natural source, such as fish waste, bone meal, or proprietary blends of nutrients. Still sounds a little sketchy. But the label says organic, so at least it's not chemical based. You might not have to think beyond that. Now, if you're a thrifty homesteader, you might see through the plastic prepackaged pellet propaganda and know that excellent fertilizer can come from knowable materials that you can personally source. You might not know the exact NPK ratio of your kitchen compost, manure, eggshells, coffee grounds, or leaf mold, but you do know it's good for the soil, doesn't generate plastic waste, and for goodness sake does not smell like that awful fertilizer aisle at the garden store. Judging by the large number of articles we have on homemade fertilizer, I think you can guess what camp insteading falls into. Now if you're an adventurous, free-thinking sort, you might know that there are more sources of land fertility than just those. The material your body produces is, or at least could be, part of the nutrient cycle, as it was for thousands of years before industrialization turned our flushings into a sellable material. To venture into this territory, you're going to have to contend with some inherited preconceptions and cultural not-so norms. Are you willing to consider human urine as a fertilizer? Let me make a case for it. I'll do my best to make it worth your while. Urine as a fertilizer, is that some sort of new unorthodox hippy dippy idea? Now, urine has been a source of fertility since antiquity and has a much, much longer history of use than anything that comes in a plastic bag from the garden store. Before municipal sewers were integrated into the backbone of cities, there were more direct ways of dealing with the daily doings of the world's population. National Geographic says that the documented practice of diverting urine for fertilizer use goes back as far as 1867, but the tradition of using human waste for soil fertility goes much further back than that. F.H. King's 1911 book Farmers of 40 Centuries relates the centuries-old practice of scrupulously collecting fertility from human sources to maintain food production in China, Japan, and Korea. There are even records of a 1724 dispute between two villages in Osaka, Japan. The fight wasn't over where to dump the night soil of the village, but rather who had the rights to claim the precious resource for themselves. Now I could go on, but I think you're starting to get the point. Though we have a visceral reaction of disgust in the modern era. Johnson, this is never easy, but uh, your co-workers are complaining about your land. But I go to the bathroom all the way down the hall. You have to take a look at these lamps. Oh. You lied, Johnson. You went to the bathroom in the lamps. Get him out of here! Yes, sir. Sorry, sir. Human waste was valued as soil enriching for the vast majority of history. We've only recently forgotten it, to the detriment of our land and waterway health. But sewers and the resulting sanitation greatly improved the health of urban populations, you might contest. And I absolutely agree. But that's because folks in the pre-industrial society of the West were literally dumping their waste into the streets and rivers rather than into outhouses privies or using the older agricultural methods of dealing with waste where it was carefully collected, not discarded. The outbreaks of cholera and polio so prevalent in those unsanitary times were due to polluted municipal waterways caused by extravagantly wasteful waste handling. Modernization just made people get sloppy rather than responsible with their waste. Now, sewers might have cleaned up the streets, but they also created the stigma of human waste that we still have. And when it will still have the majority of the first world saying gross at the thought of using waste and then quickly changing the topic. Now, urine from healthy individuals is virtually sterile, free of bacteria or viruses. Now, the key to that sentence is virtually sterile. Though there are bacteria present in urine, I'll let you know there's bacteria pretty much everywhere in your world, unless you live in an autoclave, in which case you've got other issues to deal with. Oh, I get it. I get jokes. <laughs> There's bacteria in the soil, bacteria on the plants you grow in that soil, bacteria in every single bag of fertilizer you would have bought at the store. The small amount of detectable bacteria in a healthy person's urine is negligible on the worry scale. There's several Swedish research institutions that have dedicated their work to understanding and safely using urine on grain crops. Furthermore, if you use your own pee, you're only really exposing yourself to bacteria that's already present in your body. Of course, if you're currently in the middle of a bladder or urinary tract infection, it's obvious that your urine is going to be contaminated within an elevated bacterial load to some degree. Get through that infection and heal up before you begin collecting your liquid gold again. Now the other caveat in this discussion is necessarily connected to how many pharmaceuticals are in your body. If you're currently undergoing chemotherapy or if you're on some sort of medication, your urine is likely compromised with chemicals that you probably don't want in your garden soil. Pharmaceuticals can't break down, which is one of the biggest setbacks when it comes to plans for large-scale pea collection. 
Now, all of that said, there are some guidelines that have been made by Carolyn Schoening, Swedish Institute of Infectious Disease Control, on how to safely use urine for household fertilizing. She says to store urine for six months before use to deactivate any potential pathogens. More on that later. Most can't survive outside the body that long. Pathogens can also be inactivated through composting, heat, or adding high alkaline materials such as wood ash. She also says to allow one month to pass after urine fertilization before eating raw crops such as lettuces or radishes. And she also says finally to apply urine directly to the soil, not to the plants. So what's the NPK ratio of urine? I find this question a bit frustrating, as if a sequence of three numbers could possibly explain the fertility potential of any organic fertilizer. Urine, as well as leaf, mold, wood ash, compost, and chicken manure, and any other home collected material you might harvest for garden fertility, is not a perfectly predictable assembly line created material. So all that said, the NPK ratio of human urine varies with diet, and each person has a unique profile within that. But roughly speaking, an average Westerner will produce urine with the proportions at 11 seven, two, four. That's a whole lot of nitrogen and potassium. Left to pollute waterways when wastewater is handled recklessly, those high levels of nutrients wreak havoc with algae blooms. But when handled carefully, those sought after nutrients are exactly what the garden needs. And in a locally harvested, sustainably sourced, package free and organically created way at that. Now, how do I collect and use urine as a fertilizer? The first step to reclaiming urine as the nutrient-rich soil amendment it used to be is to change your perspective on what urine is in the first place. We've all inherited the preconceived notions that pee is gross and better off being flushed into oblivion where the experts will deal with it. Out of sight, out of mind. Now, this wasteful waste of waste leads us into the territory where chemically created fertilizers are king, where we use clean, potable water to flush away nutrients, double resource loss, and waterways are abused. If you're willing to rethink your role in the nutrient cycle and break dependence on the flush it and forget it waste management, you're well on your way to using urine as a fertilizer. Now we all pee, so finding urine to collect shouldn't be too hard of a task. For a healthy person, the normal urinary output per day is anywhere between 500 to 2,000 milliliters per day, assuming that person's normal intake of fluids is around 2 liters. If you produce roughly 1,000 milliliters of urine a day, that'll give you almost 100 personally produced gallons of pee a year. Now if you're really serious about using your urine, you can invest in a urine diverting toilet or make your own. In lieu of having a fancy setup, a cup, a funnel, and a reused plastic gallon container can work just fine. Just don't leave it where visitors can see it. Now from the resources I've read, the consensus is mixed on when exactly to use urine. Some experts, as referenced above, recommend a six month storage period to deactivate pathogens. It'll need to be some sort of closed container. If the urine is allowed to evaporate, much of the beneficial nitrogen will go back into the atmosphere, not to mention it's kind of stinky. That stinky smell is the pee breaking down into ammonia, which makes a better addition to the compost pile and a little too strong to apply directly to the garden. Other resources recommend using urine within 24 hours of production. In this homesteader's opinion, the immediate and diluted use is best, but might not always be practical. If you can't use it within a day or so, store it in a small container, like a recycled milk jug, and use it when the jug is full. Now I doubt any gardener wants a huge gleaming collection of yellowish gallon jars hanging around anyway. Now one way to grow away, rather than throw away, urine is to add it to the compost pile. It'll make cardboard, leaves, dried grasses, bark, and many other slow compost and browns break down much faster. This is not ideal for a kitchen compost pile, however, as those greens are already quite high in nitrogen. Now another way to compost urine is to apply fresh urine directly to a straw bale. After six months to a year, the straw will have rotted away almost entirely, making it an excellent garden amendment. Now urine is high in nitrogen, and most Western diets are very high in salts, so straight application of urine to food plants will overwhelm them quickly. So instead, dilute it with water or gray water at a ratio of eight parts water to one part urine. Now keep in mind, young plants might need as gentle as a one to 15 dilution. Alternatively, plants mulched with at least three inches of wood chips or leaf mulch might be able to handle undiluted urine, but use the direct route with caution and dilute it if the plants begin to look stressed. Now, one way to dilute urine and recycle gray water is to mix the two and use their combined nitrogen-rich carbon-tempered mite to fertilize a food plot. EcoWaters Projects has come up with plans for what they call a wash water garden, where you can integrate this system into your home. Now, I have not been able to find these plans online, but they are referenced in Kara Steinfeld's 2004 Liquid Gold book, which you can find in the references in the description box below. If any listeners can direct me to a place where those plans still exist, I'd be grateful. Meanwhile, though, EcoWaters Projects does have designs online for a compost toilet system featuring urine diversion. Now, experimenters, inventors, and free thinkers the world over have come up with a dizzying array of, of ways to apply diluted urine, or to simultaneously apply and dilute urine into the soil for growing food. The most basic way, as I've shown by the photo above, is to dip a cup into the diluted mix and carefully apply it to every plant. Now, that said, the realm is definitely open for innovation. Just because you haven't been given the plans for how to fertilize your plants doesn't mean you can't come up with a better way. 
However you do it, it's important to remember, to remember that urine, like most fertilizers, is best when applied where it's needed, straight to the soil. Don't use it as a foliar spray and don't slosh it recklessly over your lettuce. Now I see good results in my own plantings, but you don't have to take my word for it. I'll offer up this collection of five studies and experiments from around the world as rock solid proof that urine fertilizer is as or more effective than chemically derived fertilizers. And there's a whole lot more research to find for those interested. You'll see I have a study on wood ash and urine making better tomatoes, urine making better cabbages, urine used to fertilize millet, urine used to fertilize beets, and amaranth production. Now, in addition to the obvious benefits for the garden, there are also the not so obvious economic benefits for small time gardeners. Urine doesn't need to be purchased from a big ag or petrochemical company. It comes straight from the gardeners themselves. This gives some fertility sovereignty to gardeners around the world, regardless of their wealth or status or state of their local economy. Furthermore, if urine was diverted to grow in food rather than being shipped off to a wastewater treatment plant, the energy, potable water, and resources used to process it would be used for something else, lightening the demand put on several elements of our infrastructure. But of course, free urine as fertilizer doesn't make the big weed fat cat elites any money, which is probably why you don't hear all that much about it. Not all plants have the same nutrient requirements, and therefore, not all plants will perform at their best when fertilized with urine. Remember urine's NPK ratio? It's mostly nitrogen, which creates lush, green, leafy growth. That means nitrogen-hungry plants like corn, spinach, Swiss chard, and kale all do well. But other plants that we don't grow solely for their green leaves, like carrots, might put all their energy into huge, luscious foliage rather than tasty fruit or roots, resulting in a disappointing harvest. Furthermore, legumes that fix environmental nitrogen into the soil, like beans and peas, won't benefit from having even more added to their world. So all that said, here's a list of ideal urine fertilized plants. Basil, but make sure you dilute it 10 to 1 until it's at least a month old. Cabbage, celery, corn, cucumber, eggplant, Again, dilute it 10 to 1 until it's a month old. Garlic, leafy greens, onions, parsley, peppers, potatoes, squash, tomatoes, bananas, citrus, grapes, melons, pineapple, alfalfa, barley, millet, sorghum, wheat, radishes, and spinach. So have I convinced any of you? Do you use urine as a fertilizer already? Listen, this is a safe place to discuss the topic. No judgment or gross outs here. Sound off in the comments below and let us know about your triumphs and failed experiments keeping the nutrients you naturally produce on the land where they can work for you.